All right, so we have new mail day, new home lab tech day. Um, I'm happy and not happy <laughs> because basically the Aruba S2500 switch that I bought for doing 10 gig uh, started to crap the bed. My 10 gig ports all died. All of the ethernet ports are proving to have random speed issues. So I have a new upgrade. Um, I was considering, well, I didn't really want to get another Aruba because they had a lifetime warranty, so I reached out and I was like, hey, does this thing have a lifetime warranty? Because someone mentioned they might. You do have a lifetime warranty. It would have expired in 2035, but you need a license, like a server service agreement to get your lifetime warranty. <laughs> so, aka fucking useless. And the S2400 only has three 10 gig or four 10 gig ports. I was using up three of them. And so I basically I had that, which is the 24 port with the PoE Plus, and then the four 10 gig ports. I've also got my 48 port Dell Power Connect switch, which is quite old and eh. So I figured I would get a switch that's more capable, that will let me do more in the future, and also let me downgrade from two switches. Like side grade from two switches to one switch, so I hopefully get some power use reduction, some cable clutter reduction, that sort of thing. I do kind of like having two network switches, but I can't link them together properly with SFP anyways, so it, it doesn't matter. So this arrived today, uh, like five minutes ago. Very well packaged. Came with two power cables. That's fucking nice. Most of the stuff you get on eBay doesn't come with the power cables. Rack here is taken off and the screws packaged in so they don't rip through the box and damage it. And then there was a little bit more bubble wrap, but this is really nicely packaged. I mean, like, very well done. Holy oh, shit, yeah, that's another one-hander. Alright, super well packaged. Here's our back side. So, I got a brocade. 6610-48P. So we have 48 gigabit PoE plus network ports, 8 10 gigabit SFP ports, and on the back we have four QSFP ports that can do 40 gig. So there is a guide on 4dsha.com this comes with the license where it only does one gig on the front, and the back ones, I think, are locked to just stacking. Um, but if I do a firmware update and some console messing around, then I will unlock my 10 gig ports. And then I'm pretty sure two of these, if not all four, can be used for 40 gig connections, or I could do four 10 gig connections off of each of them. I've got no need for 40 gig right now. <laughs> I don't think I will ever, but since I have it, I might like get some 40 gig cards and try it out. I don't know. But yeah, we have ourselves pretty nice, I mean it's, you know, used. Okay, so we've got it hooked up. Uh, hopefully it wor it's working fine with the Cisco serial cable. I am getting stuff over the serial management board, but um... So uh, I'm going to reboot the switch and we'll see if it actually does properly do this. Oh, you know what? This is the, um, <laughs> that is the serial port, the USB one for my custom volume control knob. All right. I got to get some drivers on. Hooray. Helps if you actually plug your adapter in while you still have a network connection so you can get drivers. So yeah, this firmware file is basically, and we upload this firmware file, and then we're going to change the switch's serial number so that it matches the firmware file. I wouldn't mind actually editing the firmware file so the serial number matched, but I don't know how, if I can do that easily. I'm not seeing anything. I probably have to use an actual specific program, but I would like to make the firmware match the serial number. Of my actual switch. It doesn't actually matter, but 2012. Interesting. 
Oh, actually, it might just stay with these fans 100% until we do this. Okay. There we go. Alright, yeah, just needed to restart the FTP server. And then we're going to need to set that to the primary. Alright, we'll keep that up space. Okay, that's done. So, we'll copy that over to the uh, primary firmware chip, I guess, here. All right, so that is done. So we are going to factory set default. Oh, reset. Um. Oh no, I don't think I hit the right key. I don't think we need. Yeah, we let it boot the full OS. All right. There we go. Quiet it down a little bit. I think it's going to take another good minute or so though, to boot up. Okay, so uh, we got it up and running. For some reason... Okay, it's not done yet. Um, for some reason I thought it was still a member after a vector reset and all that other stuff. But we booted up. It's... Uh, it's uh, where was it? Yeah, QSFP 10 port. Uh... 160 gig module, apparently. So that must also be handling some of the other stuff. And then we have our 8 port SFP, SFP plus. So now we should be able to actually set this up. Oh god, if I could type it. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. Also not enough sleep. As usual. There we go. Now we can actually configure. It was giving invalid uh, input. But for everything because it thought it was a Switch member. So. So this IP address is in my DHCP range. I don't think that's going to be a problem, though. It's just what I have my Dell switch set to as a, its IP address, so I'll just keep it the same. I can kind of remember it. Uh, or do I want to put it as... Eh, let's put it one below my router, actually. One below the router seems to make sense. Exit, right, mem. Okay, so now we need to update the firmware. I think we would need to be in the enable mode, right? Maybe not. No, oh, okay, so I was right. I have to hit enable first and then it will actually go through. Yeah, they should pop that in there, maybe. Make sure you're in enable mode. Eh, it's not that hard to figure out, though. Oh, okay, it is uh, still going, apparently. Oh, it can take up to 10 minutes. Uh... God, when is that going to be? Okay, I'll just set a timer for 10 minutes and do something else. All right, so it um, does actually pop up when it does finish stuff. It does actually put it into the terminal. And interestingly, it looks like it's got like a ruckus firmware in there. So interesting. Um, 
yeah, so we are going to give it another reboot, and then, uh, yeah, we'll do that afterwards, but I'm also going to enable, or sorry, remove the stacking configuration. So we'll do that next. All right, so now we should be able to change the stacking mode. Yeah, all right. All right, so we no longer have any stacking going on. Uh, and then it turns out that actually only two of these ports will do 40 gig. The other two are for breakout to 10 gig. So, you know, you could do link aggregation or something to join them all together if you really needed it. But, uh, I, you know, I didn't really need the... Um, yeah, didn't really need the 40 gig anyhow. Uh, and I'll have to check the power supply revision number because apparently I guess there are some quieter ones. Interesting. That I didn't know. So, um, we'll exit that. And now we can change this serial number basically just to match the one that's in the firmware. Oh. All right, so we will give it one more reboot here. Oh, son of a bitch. All right, so hey, remember to actually set your IP address. Now we should. Perfect. Perfect. All right, now we're gonna set these to 10 gig. So the nice thing is I think this switch actually does like proper full 10 gigabit um proper full 10 gigabit instead of like the uh, S2500 Aruba that was like close to 10 gig, but not quite. Not that I noticed. Uh, but maybe, maybe I will notice something uh, if I do some iProof tests and compare it to before. And then, yeah, you can set this back to your original license if you want to pay Brocade a billion dollars for a license or however much it actually costs. And then at this point, it's just going to be hardware stuff. So unfortunately, I don't have enough room to really actively show um, installation and cleanup and stuff in the server rack. I'll see what I can do. Um... But yeah, we should basically be good to do the physical installation now, and then we will, uh, yeah, swap this out, swap two of our switches out for this one. Uh, so. Okay, so first boot up in the uh, network rack. Um, yeah, so I've got the cabling actually labeled now, so I can see on the plugs which one is, like, what's for what. And now I just need to get all of the shit plugged back into it. But yeah, uh, I'm not too far off now. I have to say, the startup isn't like the fastest thing, but I do love this little check sequence that it runs on all of these. It's just fun to watch. <laughs> I think the other one would have um, gone through all the ports, the uh, Dell switch, but yeah, this thing is going to have me set for, I mean, a long time. Alright, so I had my switch in and configured 
not with like a, you know, loads of options, but all sorts of just the basic stuff to get it up and running. And every 15 minutes or so, it seems to be running the fans at 100%, either for like 20 seconds or like a minute. Uh, or maybe like 30 seconds, but um, yeah, it just seems to be looping that. It's done it three times already. Um, it seems to have only done it since enabling the power over Ethernet, because it's been up for two hours, and it's only been doing that for the last, you know, 40 minutes-ish. So, uh, also it's getting like super warm to the touch, <laughs> like uncomfortably so on the bottom. So I'm gonna crack this open, and we're just gonna take a look at the uh, heat sinks. Double check they're there, probably re-thermal paste it. Um, I might have a little uh, cryonaut thermal paste left. <laughs> I kind of want to put some cryonaut thermal paste in this, but I think my tubes are basically used up. But you know, why not uh, double check them before I throw them out? Because that's just, I think, fun. I'm not going to water cool the switch though. I'm not an idiot. Yeah, that's definitely the hot spot. So something is wrong with the uh, central heat sink there. So I'm guessing that is the CPU. And then, you know, we're going to have some sort of processors, uh, co-processors for the actual switching in the front. All right. Well, you know, it'll be, this will be interesting. It'll be more than I wanted to do on it for sure. Especially because I just got the fucking thing in. Okay, so from the look of it, this will be our actual PoE distribution board, just based on all the actual transistors and things I'm seeing on here, because you can switch each port individually. Just some header pins and female headers for the interconnects there. Oh, interesting. They've just got the same sort of setup for the actual IO LEDs. Oh, that, no, that does the whole thing. Okay, that's an odd. Okay, so you just undo the two screws on the bottom, and the two bigger screws on this, and that will fully remove the module for you. Okay, I'm going to get this screwed back together and then continue. Okay, quick correction. Undo these two back ones, and these two front ones, and these two on the bottom. These two middle ones stay in place. But, uh, PS5 control, you can go away. Now we should be able to fully remove this. These two large ones are very stuck on there, but this small one is not at all. Oh, there's some thermal pads on the bottom there as well. It's got this like sort of a pad on it. But then just like super dry, non-existent thermal paste. I think this is one of those like universal thermal paste pad things that they do for like long-term use applications. Where they're not very good, <laughs> like to begin with. Yeah, it's got that fibrous texture on it. So this would be one of those, um, uh, who the hell makes them? Can't recall. I think I'm going to work at removing this entirely, and then we'll put some cryonaut, or hopefully we'll hopefully put some cryonaut on, or maybe it will just be some uh, MX4. Yeah, you can see it's actually discolored the 
heat sink gold underneath. But, um, yeah, I'm just going to pack a bunch of this under my fingernail. It's scraping off pretty easily. Uh, and then we'll swap it out for something better. All right, so no point doing the whole chip uh, or the whole heat sink, but I've got the center section nice and clean. And this stuff really goes everywhere. So let's try and get one of these tubes of thermal grizzly cryonaut to actually squeeze out enough for this thing. I think there should be enough for this. This is probably going to be the best cooling on one of these switches out there. <laughs> Take a little look at the RAM too while I'm here. It's curious. Oh, 512 megabytes. Oh, focus. There we go. Alright. There we go. Alright. So, still like loose. It's not tensioned well. Oh, these ones are really tensioned actually. But we now have our Brocade 6610 with uh, Thermal Grizzly crown on, on it. <laughs> Those are stuck on there enough that yeah, I don't want to try and fuck with that. Not going to risk it. Okay, so the switch is up and I noticed that um, my wireless was not working and I checked and the other front panel devices actually aren't either. So if we go ahead and check, uh, inline power actually got disabled, uh, which was interesting. So uh, let me just double check. I had it basically on the whole front. Yeah, the first 12 ports, even though they're not all being used, um, only three of them just because I have my two UPSs down there and my WAN input from there. Uh, it looks like if you only want to do a single port, actually maybe not, three, five, and nine. We'll enable it. Three. Can I add another one? No, so you can either choose a single port or you can do a range, which is weird. Okay, so if we check our front panel now, it's so cool that it's there. Three is coming up. Five is a camera that's a little finicky. And yeah, our ubiquity access point is coming up as well, so that is on nine. Although I'm not seeing, it's not popping up there. Oh, I just booted up for a second. 
might still be configuring. But if we check our device before, it would basically get down to like 49 degrees and then start slowly ramping up. And we have only been up for a little while, but it started out at 36 and now it's at 38. So it's looking pretty promising. There we go. All of our PoE devices are on. So yeah, my, my camera died. Uh, my phone ran out of battery. But we'll see how high this gets. The load is the exact same. Temperature in the room is going to be more or less the same. Door is still open exactly how it is. My natural air climate control system is not pulling in fresh air. So we'll see how well that uh, repace worked. All right, so it is the next day. Um, yeah, my recording last night didn't work. Uh, so today it seems like maybe it's a bit more audible with a fresh start and like some sleep. Not much, obviously. Uh, who has time for that? But it might just be because the tone is a little different. Although it is lower than the other switches, so it seems like it would be less audible. Probably just need to get used to it. Uh, or get a bigger house. <laughs> If I win the lottery without buying a ticket, then I can actually buy one. But yeah, um, if we check our device, 38.5 degrees Celsius, basically a solid 10 degree reduction. And it's also stable at that temperature, not going to climb up massively, uh, you know, and then turn the fans on full blast. It seems not to be saving the system clock uh, properly, which is... Really fucking annoying if I have to pull the switch out of there and replace that little battery. Uh, where is there a clock setting? Clock setting. Yeah, that reset for some reason. Uh, interesting. We'll see if that was an issue, maybe. Maybe it doesn't... I think I reloaded a config or something, just as a test. Uh... So, yeah, aside from that, it's been working well. The only issue I've had is that with link aggregation, I am getting, like, this shit constantly. Uh, so I've disabled my link aggregation, although it seems to... Oh, no, yeah, no, this is 5 a.m. Um, so yeah, if I have my link aggregation enabled for my two servers, it just seems to do this hop router shit all the fucking time. Um, and then when I disable link aggregation, unplug everything, it works fine. So it, it basically kills my whole network partially, like not 80% of the way if I have link aggregation enabled. So I think I have them still configured. And then it's just not deployed, right? Or did I delete them entirely? Yeah, so they're undeployed and they're physically unplugged. Seems to be working fine. It also had trouble, like, detecting things plugged into one of them. And I had to reboot for it to actually work. But then it quit working. So I need to figure out what it is about this. That it's, you know, having a problem with link aggregation. But aside from that, it's working well. Again, like, this front panel thing. Super cool. And the, um... The other thing that's really cool is that you can actually, like, see how much power each PoE device has used. <laughs> like, what? Like, it actually, it actually logs that? That's fucking cool. So, yeah, this switch is really neat. A whole lot of stuff to play with that I uh, don't know how to properly use yet. But um, I look forward to having my network go down when I accidentally change the wrong setting. <laughs> I just want to get my link aggregation working, though. So, yeah, a little more caffeine and a bunch more time to like and sleep again. But hopefully this video was enjoyable for someone.